Hello and welcome to another video. Today I am doing a video that is kind of like a staple on booktube, like everyone, everyone does these. So I thought I would do one because after that massive unhaul I realised there are still quite a few books. I wasn't as brutal as I originally thought I was. So this is my these books will self-destruct in 12 months. Um, so I've picked 12 books. One, I actually, actually two of them, I have the full series to date. Um, and I haven't read any of them. <laughs> so these are 12 books that I have had, not necessarily for a long time. Most of them I've had for quite a while. And they're just ones that I just don't seem to be getting to. Like I have no motivation to pick them up. Um, so I'm hoping this will be a motivation to pick them up because they are ones that I don't know if I will even keep when I do eventually read them. So let's just get stuck in and then in a year's time I'm going to look back at this video and probably have not have read any of these. Because this is me. So let's just go straight in. These are in no particular order. I just pulled them off of my shelves. So first up we have Magic for Liars by Sarah Gailey. Um, so this I got a couple of years ago now. Um, it was gifted to me. It was in like a little um, tote bag thing at a blogger brunch I went to. It was a really fun blogger brunch, but that's not the point of this. Um, this is, I think, the only book out of that that I actually kept um, because it does sound really good. It's like a magic school type thing. Um, and a mystery by the sounds of it. And... It does sound really good and it does sound some, like something I would absolutely adore. I just haven't had any motivation to pick it up. I've looked at it, read the synopsis when like um, picking books for readathons and just nothing has motivated me to pick this one up. So um, yeah, this is one that I'm hopefully going to get to in the next 12 months. And if not, it is going. Then we have Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zappia. Um, I, before I bought this, I heard so many people say, oh my God, Eliza and Her Monsters is such a cute book. So I bought it and then since buying it, I've heard either nothing about it or people don't like it. <laughs> so I am kind of intrigued to give it a go, but at the same time, I'm quite intimidated by the reviews I have seen for it or not seen. Um, but I got this like a couple of years ago again and I want to give it a go. But nothing is motivating me to actually pick it up. And it is quite chunky but I think it is like multimedia kind of in a sense. So it's not as chunky a book as it actually looks but we'll see but um I don't really know much about this to be honest I think it's LGBTQ which is why I picked it up but I could be wrong on that I feel like now I am really wrong on that um if, if I'm right or wrong let me know <laughs> but I vaguely remember someone having this on their LGBT like plus recommendations video and if they did and it's not then I'm confused but yeah we'll see then we have Moxie by who's this by Jennifer Matthew yeah this is one that I just picked up um because it sounded pretty cool it's very feminist by the sounds of this which yeah I love that um but I've just not actually had the motivation to pick it up this is my issue with contemporary especially YA contemporary I am all hyped to buy it or borrow it and have it and then just never get around to reading it because I'm not a massive fan of contemporary um so yeah and I think this has just been made into a, a movie or something I just kicked something <laughs> um yeah I think it's just been made into a movie or something but I don't know but I, I still do want to kind of give it a go, but I just, I don't know. 
Next we have Wilder Girls by Rory Power. Um, this involves a quarantine and a virus, I think, which is, I would say it's what's been putting me off reading it. But to be honest, I had this long before um, the pandemic hit. So I can't exactly use that as an excuse. Um, I've heard very very mixed reviews about this and I have heard that the way it ends leaves it open for another book but it is only a standalone so that is part of the reason it's been putting me off but I am really intrigued by it so I do really want to give it a go and I am holding out hope that the actual lockdown we are in will be over soon I know I should not get my hopes up, but it's the only thing like kind of keeping me going. And I know that once we are out of this, I am going to want to read all of these dystopian books that have viruses in. Um, just so I can laugh at how like unrealistic they are in the sense that people just don't. No, mm, I hate people. I hate people. Anyway, yeah, that that's the reason I haven't picked it up recently but I'm at the point where I'm just like just pick it up just read it but then I don't so yeah next up we have Nemesis by Brendan Brackus um so this is like a thrillery mystery type thing and I got this as a mystery book um a few years back and I say a few years back it was a few years back and I just keep not picking it up but I, I genuinely do think I would really like this book um and it's so like every two years on her birthday she's murdered by the same man in cold blood but hours later she wakes up in a clearing just outside her hometown alone on her and with all evidence of the crime erased like I I'm so intrigued by this and I think this is more of a me thing like with thrillers I just don't pick them up and I'm like why are you not picking them up because I do love thrillers um so yeah I, I really need to give myself a push to actually read this so I'm hoping I do actually get this read because this sounds so good next up we have The Unlikely Escape of Uriah Heap by H.T. H.G. Parry. Um, I won this in a Twitter giveaway. I can't talk today. I won this in a Twitter giveaway um, a couple of years back again um, and I've just not picked it up. It does sound really good. It's one of those books that's like a book about books. Books, obviously. Um, so like literary characters start causing trouble throughout the city and threatening to destroy the world and like that sounds so good and it sounds like another book I've I read last year um and I really enjoyed that book and I've got the sequel ready waiting for me um and I don't know why I haven't picked this one up yet but it's got to the point that if I don't pick it up in the next 12 months I am just gonna unhaul it because clearly it's not pulling me in enough for me to actually pick it up which is a shame because it sounds really good Next up, we have The Queen's Fall by Ali Sherrick. So this one I'm putting on here, this is a very recent acquirement. Um, I got this in a Tales by Mail, I think it was in February. And the reason I have put this on this list, with it being such a new book, is because this is historical fiction. However, it is about Henry VIII. And I am very intrigued by this because I was obsessed with the Tudors when I was a kid when we got to that part of history lessons I was in my element and those episodes of all those snippets of the episodes of horrible histories are my favorites because I just love everything about the Tudors they were brutal and they just they are fascinating never would want to live in those times ever but they fascinate me and I feel like this is one that I'm just not going to get to and I want to so I'm putting this on here to force myself to either read it or get rid of it because I know it's a historical fiction so I will put it off and put it off and put it off so I don't want to do that so this is like sort of a I'm putting it on here to sort of force myself to read it soon. 
Next we have Once and Future by Amy Rose Capetta and Corey McCarthy. This is a um, Arthur and Merlin retelling, I believe. Um, yeah, a new King Arthur has risen and she's got a universe to say. Yes, I remember now. It is a gender bent Arthur retelling. Um, I've heard very mixed reviews about this and I think that's why I've been putting it off. Um, and a lot of the reviews I have heard are not incredible and apparently the sequel's not amazing either. Um, but I, I want to give it a go for myself. And I need to stop focusing on what other people are saying about it and just read it myself. Um, and I'm really hoping to get to it because I love King Arthur. And I want to read more Arthurian legends. I have other I have another one on my bookshelf which isn't in this because I know I want to read that. That is not going on my self-destruct list. But this one I feel like I've had for so long now. I think it's like two years. two years so I need to kick up the butt to read it so hopefully this is it but I don't think this is going to be one that I keep but again it could shock me and I could absolutely adore it and want to keep it next up we have The Graces by Laura Eve um this one was actually given to me by a friend um because I had been eyeing it up for a while and I love hardbacks and my friend was giving away the hardback so she gave it to me. Um, all I know about this is there is witches. Um, so this would be a really good pick in a readathon where it's like read a book with witches. But I don't pick it. I literally scour my shelves for books with witches and do not pick this one. So yeah, I don't really know why I keep putting this off but I'm at the point now I've had it for a few years now on my shelves and if I don't read it soon I need to just get rid of it this one was actually on my maybe pile when I was doing that massive unhaul and being brutal as hell and I for some reason decided to keep it so I feel like with that I need to read it soon and if I don't I can't justify keep keep on holding on to it if I'm not going to read it so that's why that's on this list next we have another fairly new release and that is star daughter by shvita thakra this came in a fairy loot at some point last year um i think it was like the middle of last year and this does sound really good however i've heard extremely mixed reviews and when i say mixed reviews i mean from either people think it's okay or people don't like it at all i have not seen anyone say they absolutely love this book this was the best book ever and it's been putting me off picking it up and i feel like especially with a gorgeous edition like this that i know that there are people out there that like collecting the things like this i feel like i can't hold on to this if i'm not gonna read it and love it so i want to try and get to this fairly soon so that i can read it and then if i don't love it i can i can pass it on to someone who will appreciate how beautiful this is because i can't justify keeping a book on my shelf just because it's beautiful um so yeah we're almost done next one is grave mercy by robin lavifers lafers lafivers robin lafivers I'm gonna say. Um, so I actually have the first four books in this series, maybe five, I can't remember. Um, so there's like a trilogy, this is the first in the trilogy and then there's another series which I believe is a trilogy which follows on from it. And me being me and having no control was at a book fair thing where it was like a charity thing and I saw the first four or five of these and bought them all they were all like 50p each so i couldn't resist picking them up because of how cheap they were um however that now means i have like four or five books on my bookshelf for a series that i have not read any of and i need to be brutal in the sense that if i do not read this first book 
I don't know if you've ever read the whole series, but if I have not read this first book in the next 12 months, I'm getting rid of the whole series that I have um, because this is ridiculous. It's taken up so much space. So there's that one. And talking of taking up so much space, I was umming and ahhing about putting this one on this list, but I feel like I need to because I bought this entire series <laughs> spent so much money on these and I still have not read them and I've had them for like two years and that is the Game of Thrones series by George R. R. Martin. I bought the whole series because of the new Dragon Scale editions and I haven't picked them up. I was supposed to be buddy reading these with my mum and my sister this year however both me and my mum don't think we're actually going to like it and it was putting us off the idea of buddy reading. So I have seen that the audiobook for, for this is on script. I'm thinking at some point I'm going to try and read along with the audiobook. However, I am very likely not going to love it and end up just unhauling the whole series. But I know that if it's not on a list like this, I'm still going to keep putting it off and it's going to be like still on my shelves in 10 years still unread so it's going on there purely for that reason because i don't want to keep hanging on to an entire series because it takes up a massive chunk these books are chunky this is just the first book these books are chunky and they take up so much space on my shelf and i need to get rid of them if i'm not gonna read them and love them so yeah that's on there <laughs> so that was my 12 books that I'm going to unhaul if I don't get to in 12 months. So if we come back to this video in March, April time next year, and I still have not read these, then not only am I going to unhaul them, but I'm going to slap myself because I need to stop doing this. Um, obviously, there are other books that I want to get to soon, but they're ones that I don't want to unhaul if I don't get to them soon um because they are ones that I really want to read and I mean to be fair I do want to read these but less so um and I need to start being more brutal with things like that so you know <laughs> but um I I want to know what you think is there any of these books that you think I should prioritize um that you want to see me read obviously you'd get updates in my vlogs and wrap-ups and everything but um where wilder girls is concerned i'm probably not gonna read that right now because you know still in lockdown but if you come back to me in a few months when hopefully we're not in lockdown then then I'll be more open to reading it. Um, but apart from that, let me know if there's any you think I should prioritise. Because, yeah, I, I don't want to have to just unhaul without reading. I did that with so many books on my massive unhaul a few months back. And it just, it makes me sad getting rid of books that I've not read yet. So I do want to read them. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. And um, that, so that's that's it. I hope you liked this video. If you did, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you next time. Bye!